Hey, this is Matthew Butler, and this is the tutorial for the Picking Up the Pieces video. Alright, so this is like the type of effect that uh, you're going to get if you didn't, uh, if you're just watching this on YouTube right now, but um, basically I'm going to go through how to put your logo in and uh, customize this to fit your needs. So when you open this up and download it, you'll have all these files. So you'll just go down the line. Zero, zero would be this tutorial you're watching right now. Next up, you want to open up this logo. And this is the logo that opens up. So you um, get this Envato logo here. You can just delete that right away. And then make your own logo in here. Let's just type out logo. Make that a little bit bigger. And then let's just add like a star or something in here. Okay, super logo. All right. Um, so, what you want to do if you have any type at all, you want to go to um, exp to uh, create outlines. There it is. So then you have outlines of your text, and then you have this little logo here. All fine and dandy. Then you want to go to file, just like file save type thing. And then um, make sure you save it as the 01 file that you originally have in here. And you click save, and you want to replace it, yes. And then you have a dialog pop up. You want to save it as Illustrator 8. Click OK, and you might have this thing pop up depending on what your text or logo looks like. You can click OK, and then what you want to do is select everything here and copy it. So edit copy, and then we'll head into this second logo converted file. And it has the previous file in there, which is the Envato logo. You can delete that right away. And then what you want to do is edit paste in place. What that does is paste it exactly in the right location. Um, if you're using, as of right now, I didn't use any color at all besides black, but if you have more than one color, you're going to want to do this step. If not, you can skip to part three. So part two right now, um, because uh, I'll just change this logo part to be like yellow or something. And then we have this that's black. Okay, that's fine. So basically, what I'm going to do is just enlarge this just a little bit. Because since I'm making this 3D, I'm going to have like little edges around all of this. It'll be white, which is not going to look good. So basically, you just want to enlarge everything just a little bit. And then I'll select this. And what I'm going to do... Depending on how your logo looks, you might be able to get away with this, you might not. I'm just going to make a selection around here, put that in the back, and that's going to be perfect for this. So then I'm going to go to File, Save, and it should save automatically. You don't have to worry about saving it a specific um, file type, or save it a specific version. So after that, we can head into Cinema 4D. Great. So you open up the file. You got the little um, created by me right here, and then a help file right here. It'll walk you through the steps if you don't want to um, listen to me or watch this tutorial again, which is understandable. And then we can just, so um, first thing you do, go to File Merge, and you're going to want to merge in that 01 file and scale one and connect splines and then click OK. After that, click this little twirl down menu, select all your paths and change the angle to one and make sure you have close spline clicked. Right away you'll notice the logos up in there. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is a good idea is to try to, this is going to be basically the frame area of where your logo is going to be. 
So you want to kind of center this in the frame and make it like kind of as large as you want it to be displayed on the screen. So if you want it to kind of take up a good chunk of the screen, do that. If not, I'm just going to use the one that I already have right here. So logo's in there. We can right click and go to connect and delete. And then drag it out of this null object folder here. And now here's our logo. Rename that. All right, next up you can click on this controls. Go to controls and you have your spline. So drag your spline in there. The logo will be right there, which is perfect. And you'll notice probably it's not in the right location. You can just... Uh... So if by chance when you import your file and it doesn't line up to the text right there in the background, to the spline right here, what you do is select your controls, click the little plus there, go into this um, logo right here, and click the little plus again, and then go to spline instances. And you can go into F4, um, to the front view, and just align it to make it line up to where the logo is. You want to make sure that um, your position is about uh, exactly even to where the outline is, the, the normal outline is. But um, it should import it to be exactly where it lines up perfectly, but this is just in case, uh, giving you a heads up, do that. So continuing on, next up we have the shape. So if we zoom in here, you'll see that these are all squares. So if you wanted them triangles instead, you'll notice they all turn into triangles. Um, you can just click right here. And it'll give you triangles instead for your um, front faces and back faces that come out of your logo. And then after that, depending on the size of your logo and your computer speed, you might want to increase the chunk size or decrease the chunk size depending on you know how you want your program to look so if you go to like say 130 now let's go a little bit closer um, I guess that's good right here 140 frames so you see there's a little bit of chunking going on over here but not much uh, if we drop this to like 2 you'll see the chunk style kind of differs and then if we change it to like 16 you get these giant chunks that just are absurdly huge but it would also decrease your render render time so that is that and then um, you got the color drop down right here so if you're just using one color you can just click this color guy and pick your specific color and then uncheck that button right there and when you render it out you'll see it's all red now as it slowly chugs away okay but if you are using more than one color like I have the yellow and black you can click this guy and it won't update right away or at all you will have to um, just if you want it okay I can render it out right now and it will actually be that yellow and the black but it won't look like that on here that is just because um, if you go into this texture in the bottom and click on texture and click reload image it'll change but uh, you don't really need to if you don't want to so just remember that um, and then finally, there's this little pole right here you'll see. Basically, it's going to be in the bottom left of your logo, kind of. You can see it better right here. So you want to position this bottom left um, pole to be the bottom left of your logo. So you have this little window right here. You can move this guy around, position it up. 
that's almost in the corner. So when I want to get more detailed, I can just go on these numbers individually, line this guy up, It'll be basically right in the corner of your bottom left of your logo. And there it is. Um, so if I increase the uh, or decrease the chunking size, you'll see it shatters better. Anyways, that's basically all you need to do for version for part three. Um, can click on the render settings, and I'll walk you through how to set this up. Go to save, and you see this little tilde there. That basically means you're going to need to put this render it out into the footage folder, and right here. It's everything before that. So all you need to do is find this folder, footage folder, and save it into that that came with your file. And do the same for your multipass. Same folder. Save that out. And then if you wanted to get it like really good quality, you can change the anti-aliasing to best. But if not, you can just go with geometry and that'll work fine. Um, you probably won't notice it unless you're doing like a 1080p or 720p. Um, yeah. And then finally, if you really want to increase your render speeds, you can turn off ambient occlusion. Um, and that's basically it. Um, you can close out of that and then just click this little guy right here and your project will start rendering out. That's basically all you need to know. So continuing on, once your render is done, you'll hop on over into number four, which is After Effects. So open up After Effects, bring it in, and then you'll have your uh, files that you just rendered out. They're already in here. And if not, you can go to um, Replace Footage, or else you could just double click and then Relink the files that you just um, you just rendered out. So um, in Cinema 4D, you chose um, if you go to output, you chose like if you wanted 1920 by 1080 or 1280 by 720 or 864 by 486 or whatever for your um, output dimensions. Um, on here, it's defaulted at 720 for me. So if you hop in and go to 720. Since I rendered this out at 720, it'll look perfect. But let's say you rendered it out as uh, 480p, you just click on 480p instead. And as you notice, that's not going to fit for um, 480p. It'll look a little messed up. So make sure you pick the right one. And then hop into Controls. Select that. Then you can just change the background color to be something that looks nice for your logo. And then if you notice in the beginning from 0, 0 to about 2 seconds in, this bottom right corner, you can change the color kind of. So the only thing that you need to worry about for the bottom in the first 2 seconds is this little guy, the lightness. So depending on how your logo looks, you just ch change your lightness down to negative 100 or 0 or whatever make it look nice and obviously back to the background color tweak that oh, you do not want to mess with the lightness though just with the hue well, <laughs> make that uh, known okay and then finally what you want to do if you want to get to the tweaking this more you can click this little shy guy and it'll come up with all of the files here that is made in After Effects. So all these purple files that you start out with, they're all these um, line, light line things in here. So if you want to move positions of those, you can do that. Um, then we got some adjustment layers on these guys that are just uh, to make it look a little nicer in those places. Add a little glow right here. If you didn't want that glow, you can turn that layer off. Um, you'll notice that's just the glow right there. And then diving a little bit deeper, we have uh, 
this depth mat which just makes the um, particles that are farther away and closer really close to the camera just uh, increase the brightness so you can see them better and then below that we have this guy which is just like the main video and farther to the right is the main video again where is it selecting the wrong layer anyways and then at the very bottom all these orange layers are the background that's basically everything you need to know about this project um, these uh, time markers are up here to show you exactly when the camera changes position um, so just keep that in mind if you want to reference that at all. And um, let's have, hop back into Cinema 4D for a second. And if you're looking for like, hey, I want to modify this, but I can't find like the background or anything like that, all you need to do is pull up your layer browser right here. And there's a few things that are turned off, like your cameras and stuff. So if you want to modify where your camera is, that is where they are hidden. You just click that guy and they'll make them visible. And that's basically all. If you have any more questions, you can contact me on my portfolio page on VideoHive. Thanks a lot.